overcome barriers to weight loss and achieve optimum well-being with lifestyle intelligence. Interview with Dr. Lloyd Cloberman. Did you ever try to lose weight or do something for your overall well-being and had difficulty succeeding? What are the barriers that stop you from doing what you may know to do, but it, you're still having difficulty? Would you like to have some resources that can help you? Then you are here for a treat. Stay tuned. In this episode, our guest, Dr. Lloyd Globerman, has some great pointers to use lifestyle intelligence to lose weight and optimize your well-being. You're watching episode 86 of Happy and Healthy Mind Show. Thank you for joining. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Dr. Lloyd Globerman is a world-renowned clinical psychologist and inventor. After 40 years of working with patients and audio technology to help people accomplish meaningful changes, he has created a widely available app that guides users along a clear pathway towards balanced and healthy living in just three minute segments. This cutting edge system involves a unique psychoeducational approach to building and maintaining a positive ecosystem for a healthy lifestyle. And I'm your host, Dr. Rosina. I help organizations reduce burnout related to accidents. I'm a speaker, author, and an integrative psychiatrist. I believe that your mind is the software that runs the hardware of your brain and your body. Therefore, I share practical tips for your mental fitness so you can live your best life with hope, health, and happiness. Please consult your healthcare professional for any medical advice. If you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable sufferings. Let me ask Dr. Lloyd, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Nice to be here. And tell me, how did this topic become important in your life? Well, it began with my life. I, uh, I'm a child of the, the 50s and 60s. That's when I grew up. And for anybody who grew up at that time, you probably remember that the sorts of things and topics that we talk about today, which are commonplace, were non-existent back then. There was no model of reality for healthy behavior. Nobody talked about health and wellness. That was not, I think, I think the term wellness was coined in 1950, but didn't actually get any traction till the 1970s. So there was nothing there to guide anybody. And obviously I didn't know anything. So nutrition for me meant there was enough to eat. Exercise was something you did in gym class and uh, sleep was an annoyance that for some reason everybody said you had to do, but you never knew why you had to do it. Right? So during that period of time, I got bigger without understanding exactly why. So I had a lot more weight on my body than I did now. And it wasn't until I was living in Los Angeles for a little while, a friend came to visit and he made a comment about my appearance, which was the first time I realized that I had gained a substantial amount of weight. It was that moment in time when it wasn't about health or information. It was all about, I was embarrassed. And so that shame drove me into saying, well, I got to make some changes. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I managed to do certain things correctly, lose some weight. And at that point, other things began to happen in the culture, like the exercise movement. A lot of people started running. People realized that was actually good for you. We didn't know that before. We didn't know movement was useful, even though as chill, as infants, we knew how important it was to move and we were moving all the time. We all, we all knew appetite as, as an infant because we knew when we were hungry, we knew when we were full, we knew when we were tired, we knew when we needed to sleep. All those things were wired into us. We had the language of that from the beginning, but we managed to create through culture and family amnesia for all of that stuff so that people began to not get enough sleep, eat inappropriate foods, never exercise. So right now, at a moment in time when this culture has an overload of information that's useful, we have a culture that's heading for towards half 
the people in the country are going to be obese by 2030. Now, how's that possible with all of that information available? The reason is people don't pay attention or information isn't presented to them in a way that can grab their attention so they could use it meaningfully. There's not enough contact at the right time and in the right place. What I've been trying to do, and as you've introduced, introduced me having to do with lifestyle intelligence, I'm trying to provide something for people that is easy to understand, user-friendly, provides information, motivation, and allows you to have enough contact, therefore repetition and reinforcement. And anybody in psychology knows how important reinforcement is. You need to feel rewarded for things that are useful. So my job is with this app to show up enough so that after a while, we're good friends. <laughs> and, and you like what I'm saying because you're beginning to notice things are happening that, that are useful. So the whole idea is to, to develop a model that's useful. Wonderful. Right. So let me kind of stop you over here and ask you, all right, so you your journey started with the... <laughs> With an insult. <laughs> okay. You felt embarrassed and you wanted to feel better. Mm -hmm. You did not realize that what you mm -hmm. were trying to do was to feel well. So once you applied these tools, how did the life change? What changes did you notice after you applied these tools that you're going to teach us today? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I knew enough about nutrition to know that drinking soda regular soda with sugar was probably not a good idea. So I began to make certain dietary changes. One of them was that, another one was eating less red meat and just eating less. Now I didn't know very much about nutrition, so I was flying blind. But what I did notice is that when I made those certain dietary changes, I began to lose weight. So when you lose weight and you, can, and you realize, well, I have some control over my life, you begin to feel a little bit more confident. So at that moment in time, I realized, okay, maybe I have some control over this. Maybe I can do everything else that I need to do. But I didn't know a whole lot other than what I did know. But that was working. So at least I now had my self-esteem back. So with that, I was able to go out into the world a little bit more confidently, which was a good beginning. Everything else came incrementally in terms of the work that I was doing and applying that little bit of motivational kind of things that I could do with people. But the most important thing is to get that first piece in place and sustain it. Because if there's one thing we know, when people try to change behaviors, certain lifestyle behaviors, it's the old New Year's resolution. If you wanna fail, make it a New Year's resolution. Because <laughs> invariably, you're going to fail. <laughs> because people don't know that the rhythm of change is not a straight line. You need to take three steps forward and a step back. You need to know what it is to overcome the obstacles of you can't be perfect all the time. Because mm -hmm. people want to be perfect. And as soon as they fall off the wagon, they junk the whole enterprise. No. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean. So, so you were able to lose weight by remaining persistent and repeating mm -hmm. your behavior. Um, you were able to then improve your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, and... And did you also feel well overall? You, you know, mean physically well? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. well, at, at, right after that, maybe a few years after I began to, to realizing that I was able to keep the weight off, that's when all that exercise movement started. So I began to do that as well. So now I've incorporated that second piece, right? Because the ecosystem of healthy living is eating, sleeping, moving. All right. The one thing I hadn't fully understood yet was just how important sleep was. Mm. And you can't overstate that. It's singularly. I know when I say this to people, most people heads tilt a little bit. Like I say, the single most important thing you do in life is sleep, which people have a hard time grasping that concept <laughs> because what's happening when I'm sleeping? And yeah. the answer is everything including the single most important bit of information I think I've ever come across. And I, I, you probably are aware of this, but I'll, I'll share it with your audience because I think it's that important. 
when we, there's a lot of things happen with sleep. And we all know memory, building new brain cells, the consolidation of the days of all the kinds of things that everybody probably thinks is happening. But the one thing that showed up on the radar in a few years back, 2019, was the fact that when we're asleep, the spaces in between our brain cells open up. So now you have all of these channels. Then cerebrospinal fluid pours into your brain. And then your brain goes into dishwasher mode. And it cleans itself. Now I'm thinking, I, I can't say this out loud right now because holy bleep, the magnitude of that one piece of information can never be overstated. Think about that. Your brain cleans itself every night. So you can imagine what happens if you're short of sleep every night, if you're sleep deprived. What does that mean for the accumulation of waste products in your brain? Need I say more? Everybody's scared of things like heart attacks, strokes, cancer, but they, they pale in comparison to serious cognitive decline, dementia, and Alzheimer's, which is exactly what happens if you don't clean your brain. So hence, the understanding of how important sleep is, hopefully your audience will begin to take notice of this. Anyway, when I first heard this, I said to myself, this is the, the piece of information that has to go viral. Like everybody's gonna be talking about this, right? I mean, yeah. seems that important and that sexy? Yeah. Did it happen? No. no, no, it came and went and just, just drifted off into the ecosphere of nothingness. Right? Because and I'm saying so myself, much information, so much information, like you just earlier said, that it's hard to find the right information and benefit from it in a timely manner. So I'm glad that you're bringing that point up. Which is, which is the reason why I decided to put together something that would feed you, no pun intended, bits and pieces of information, reinforcement, motivation consistently so that you can't get away from it because I'm going to, I'm going to keep poking at you. I'm going to keep bringing things up and so, I, I don't, I don't let up. Let me tell uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. Let me just kind of ask you, let's say, okay, if I'm a client mm -hmm. or uh, a person who is interested in optimizing my well being, um, I want to lose my weight and I have already tried some of the things that are available. Like, you know, everybody, um, <laughs> There's a there's a statistics that 49% of Americans are trying to lose weight every year. It's like 50% of the population is trying to lose weight. So let's say I am a client. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to live healthy, and I'm having difficulty. What would you teach me that would help me overcome my barriers? Okay, the first thing I would ask you goes back to what we were just talking about. What kind of sleep pattern do you have? You'll fre and you frequently, I'll ask, I ask everybody who comes into my office all of these questions. And they say, well, I, I get enough sleep most of the time. Yeah, so why um, don't I kind of uh, role play with you? Okay, okay. so I'm the client okay. and um, ask me the question. You just ask the question, how's my sleep pattern? Uh -huh. um, I, I sleep adequately. Okay, how much sleep do you typically get? Say it again. How much sleep do you typically get? I get between six to eight hours. Okay, which is more prevalent, six or eight? Because if it's six, there's a problem. Because the one thing that we know about when you're sleep deprived, even if it's only an hour a night, your appetite ramps up because your brain needs more energy so it makes you hungry so you consume more food so anybody who's sleep deprived it's going to have a hard time losing weight and it's going to have nothing to do with motivation it has to do with the way the brain perceives what's going on and needs to have the energy that should have been there but you didn't give it to him because you didn't sleep enough so this is how everything is tied together this is why it's ecosystem okay Wonderful. all right so all right, so I will try to sleep eight hours. How would working with your app help me maintain that behavior? Because I keep reinforcing these things 
over and over again. I don't just say it once, right? I cycle back. I say, oh, by the way, you remember two days ago when I said this? Have you been focusing on that? I keep reminding you over and over where all the hot spots are. And I'm going to tell you what you're going to be thinking about while this is going on. Because if there's one thing that I've learned about myself, and I know because we're all more alike than we are different, we all have, we all have the ability to run scams on ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we do that. We do. Humans do that really well. We say, well, you know what? I don't really feel like doing this today. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. The moment you hear the word tomorrow in your head, you should know automatically you're running a scam on yourself, right? So my <laughs> job- games. I call it like, you know, you play the games with your ex brain. Exactly. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. So part of what I do with people, what obviously when I'm working with them, but also on the app is to keep catching them in these little loopholes because after a while, all right, he's got me again. Okay, I do. And because I'm gonna, I'm trying to do what is a very difficult thing. Even though it's an app, I want you to feel as if you and I have a relationship. That I'm not just this distant person providing you with information. That I understand who you are, I understand your needs, and if you pay attention and follow through with some of the things that we're talking about, this can be a profound influence on your life. Because I know I know these things personally. I mean, I've been there. So it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking a language okay. that I don't understand. I know these things. So let's see if I say, okay, I'm now getting consistently eight hours. What's okay. the next? Okay. Next up, are you working out at all? What's the rhythm of, if you are, how often? How many minutes? Do you have an idea how many calories you burn while you, do you by the way, do you know how many calories you consume typically on a day? Do you know how many calories you burn? You need to, you need to begin to understand that language as well the language of the numbers of lifestyle, critically yeah. important things, right? And then what's preventing you from following through on what you just told me you want to do? What's keeping you from doing that? Are there people around you who don't like the idea that you're changing your lifestyle and they resent the fact that you're leaving the congregation and going off on your own? Don't think that people don't have those kind of issues occur. If yeah, you're, so like, you're you know, a person like, you know, a lot of my audiences are um, mothers, women in leadership who have, who are wearing many hats, you know, running between the work and home and personal life and sometimes traveling. And so it is hard to maintain the routine or it is hard for them to take care of themselves because, you know, caretakers, we take care of everybody else before ourselves. And our lives is so busy and so scattered that sometimes it's hard to maintain that routine of exercise. I, I agree. So one of the things that I've included in this app is it's I call it a secondary piece, but on some level, it's equally important. It's a series of audio programs that I developed a while back and now are part of the app. And it's basically a storytelling format. I tell you adult fairy tales. But hmm. most of the time while you're listening, you hear two stories at the same time. Hmm. One in your left ear, one in your right ear. Obviously, you're wearing earbuds, earphones, okay? The whole idea, and what I'm about to say right now is going to be very different from anything anybody's heard before, but it's also useful. The single most powerful state of consciousness that we have is the state right in between waking and sleep. It's called the hypnagogic state. We are there for very brief amounts of time as we drift off. The problem is we're in it for such a short period of time, we can't use the state proactively to help us change. However, if you hear two things play to you at the same time, you go into this pleasantly overloaded state and eventually your mind drifts away and you end up in the hypnagogic state for an extended period of time. Hmm. I, I had people test this with EEG machines to see whether this was actually happening. 
it was. So what we have is storytelling, relaxation, and then drifting off, but floating in between. Then I structure messages, positive messages for changing the way you think, the way you feel, the way you sense, and the way you behave. All the kinds of things that you're focusing on with the lifestyle intelligence in, in real time with focused awareness, I'm now going to help you increase the probability that you're going to follow through by bypassing consciousness and providing you with the same sorts of suggestions, but outside of awareness. The combination of these two processes covers the entire spectrum of consciousness in positive ways from the to, from the you listening to me right now to the part of you that can process information outside of awareness together something interesting happens so let me clarify so what i'm hearing you kind of combining three four concepts that i also use so you're talking about using that phase where you are going from awake state to sleep state because that's the time of the time when our conscious barriers or walls are down. So your Correct. brain is more- Nicely, nicely said. Yeah. Nicely so said. So you're able to absorb that information more. And that's why a lot of times when people uh, practice affirmations, they, they, use, they try to use it at that time. And like Perfect. you said, because we are kind of drifting off, it is hard to kind of maintain that consciousness to read those affirmations to yourself. So your app provides this external source that mm -hmm. only you are falling asleep, that app is giving you these affirmations, these positive messages that helps to reprogram your brain. Perfectly in the, said. In a sense, rewiring your brain. That's right. So you've got these two pieces. You've got your focused attention on lifestyle intelligence, the things you want to do. And now we help you on the unconscious level, get the motivation and the stress management in check so that everything can be reinforced and flow together so the rhythm of your life and the choices that you make are better choices i mean what's more important than this kind of stuff we all yeah. we all know how important it is we all yeah. want to live yeah 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 so again like you know as i when i started being the client i say like i know about it it's the why am i having difficulty applying it and this makes sense that you can help reprogram at that time because you know there's the whole concept of self-hypnosis so you're using the, almost the concept of hypnosis and even self-hypnosis but again because you are falling asleep so it is hard for you to consciously program those messages in the brain which a lot of a lot of people try to do it and they are you know when they when they're successful that really works your app is this resource that could help them do that better help address all the levels of consciousness, you have a better ch chance of helping people make changes. I mean, we all, people, people need help right now because the way the culture is set up and there's so many stressful things going on that anything that can help reduce stress and introduce concepts that can help people manage their life is gonna be useful. So that's the point of this whole thing. And uh, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, I'm sure people are interested in learning more about this program. So how can they reach? How can they learn more about it? They can go to the web website, Lifestyle Intelligence LQ, all one word, small letters, Lifestyle Intelligence LQ, uh, and com. Uh, dot com, dot com. com, and what will pop up will be a screen. It'll say, show me more. And then there'll be a video of me talking about the way the, the website is structured, I mean, the app is structured, and then um, you'll decide whether it's something that you'd be interested in using. That'd be wonderful. I, I have a question here. Sure. Why, why LQ? What, is, what does LQ mean, and why did you come up with this? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to, to introduce all of this stuff. And if there's one thing that we've learned that I've learned was language is everything. Words are really important. Think about before Dan Goldman made emotional intelligence 
famous. We had all the bits and pieces of what emotional intelligence constitutes out there. We know about social relationships. We knew about self-esteem. We knew about managing your emotional state. All of these were bits and pieces of our social emotional life. But until, I think it was Peter Salavoy and John Mayer, two social psychologists, wrote a paper called Emotional Intelligence, EQ, nobody had any idea of something called emotional intelligence. But they took that, wrapped all of these things, wrapped around it, and suddenly brought it to the culture. Dan Goldman made it famous, and now there was IQ and EQ. Emotional intelligence is part of the cultural vernacular now. So I said, why don't I borrow this model and make lifestyle and intelligence, which it actually is. It's the structural foundation of which we function well emotionally and intellectually. So it becomes the foundational intelligence, hence LQ. I, IQ, EQ, LQ. I wanted to fit it into that model because it made sense and because that's what it is, our foundational intelligence. That's and our so, so are people born with the LQ? I'm sorry. I've, I'm, I've, oh, oh, the, the, your beautiful question. Yes, that's that's the whole irony of everything. That the, our first language was sensation. Our intel, our first thoughts were sensations. Thoughts, sensations, synonymous. Right? We knew when to eat. We knew when to sleep. We knew when to move. We knew when we wanted to be held. We communicated. Sensation was everything. But over time, we learned to forget about all of that. We ate when it was time to eat. Why am I eating? I'm not hungry. It's dinner time. That's why you're eating, Lloyd. I mean, all of those kinds of things. We, lear we learned how to forget sensory experience, which is what lifestyle intelligence is all about. Begin with reconnecting with your sensations so you can put the right labels on them, so you can have control over what's going on and become a healthier, more functional, happier person. I love that question. That question was perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so let me, you know, there's so much, so much to learn and so much to talk about, but I'm realizing that we're coming towards the end of time, so I want to make sure that we give our audience all the resources. Thank you for offering the gift of uh, information about this program. Mm -hmm. We would put it on our website, happyandhealthymind.com. So if you are interested, please visit and download the resources. If you are in US and you would like a text reminder, you can also text the word joyful to number 38470 and we'd be happy to send you the reminders and links for the resources let me end the session today by leaving you with this thought today is the first day of the rest of your life what changes are you going to bring in your life to live healthier and happier life so you can optimize your well-being are you going to take some risk? Are you going to take some steps to improve what you have done before? And so you can be at one step higher or better than yesterday. On that thought, thank you for joining. Stay safe, happy and healthy. Until next time, Dr. Rosina.